but it was good. It was shaking. Y'all, how y'all doing? Good afternoon. Yeah, so pretty much want to just go into a couple topics that have recently came out of the Jets organization. One being Denzel Mims' trade request and the other being Michael Carter seemingly taking on that RB1 role. So going to the Denzel Mims trade request, I mean, us Jet fans at this point, we really can't say that we're surprised at the trade request. I mean, it's been trending this direction since last offseason, quite frankly, you know, since the new coaching staff has come in and they've been attempting to implement their schemes and their strategies, you know, for the offensive side of the ball. And it seems as if Mims's skill set more so was catered to the last regime, you know, that more downhill, that more vertical, that more you know, deep threat style of offense. Whereas with the new system, the new regime, we kind of want to go so more to route running guys, you know, being versatile pieces, because you just have to think of it like this. Our coaching staff is pretty much based out of the San Francisco system and their coaching tree. Who are their weapons in San Francisco? Debo Samuels, Brandon Ayuk, Elijah Mitchell, versatile weapons you know backs that can catch out of the backfield that are gonna run the ball receivers that are gonna run out of the backfield they're gonna catch the ball they're gonna you know they have no limitations pretty much to their games you know for the most part at least for what san francisco wants them to do which is why they've been you know so successful over the years but um as it goes back to denzel mims and our new coaching staff it seems to not really be a match you know like it seems to not be a very fluid match between the two so given that Denzel Mims is a young player still very young still physically gifted he's definitely he definitely has a lot of potential so it's never going to be a situation where you just want to drop him and cut your losses and you know do away with him like some of these Jets fans want you to do no 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 way in hell that's not happening what you have to do Given that Denzel Mims was a second round pick, you're going to have to try to squeeze some value out of him in a trade negotiation. You're going to have to. So in my opinion, I would love for the Jets to not settle for anything less than a fourth round pick for him. And in that scenario where you are getting a fourth or fifth round pick, at least try to double up on it get more than one if they're going to be later round picks because i know at this point mims hasn't been the most productive receiver in these past few seasons of his career as a new york jet but at the end of the day there's still loads of potential there so the way how i see it is you gotta get some value back for that got to you got to like if sam darnold obviously quarterback is a premium position in the nfl every team needs a quarterback they're going to value a quarterback more than anything else if Sam Darnold goes for a second round pick, then I mean, it was a conditional, but still a second round pick. Then come on. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Like Denzel Mims has to get traded for something of some value, some level on some level, whether it has to be a player included or something. You just got to get something back for that. Like, I don't want to see a Chris Herndon part two or a. You know, like these guys who we traded who really didn't really bring us back any, if any, value at all. Like, I don't want to see those levels of trade for a guy like Denzel Mims. Mims was drafted in the second round of that draft, period. You know, and it's not like a situation where it's not to shit on Jalen Rager, but it's not like a situation where it's like, oh, the entire fan base hates him. We see him week in and week out and he just sucks and he obviously can't produce at an NFL level. No offense all respect to Jalen Rager, but it's not a situation like that. Like Mims, his biggest problem has been like most fans will say like it's it's between the ears. Like we don't get him in on many plays because of whatever reason that may be. It's like it's a lack of opportunity and a lack of being able to adapt to the new system is what I would say is what's killing his Jets career so far. So just don't want to throw a guy like that away for nothing. That's my piece on it. But going to Michael Carter, Michael Carter and Brees Hall in this running back room. For one, I think Jet fans need to relax. If there are any out there that are overreacting, I haven't seen it personally on Twitter. But if there are, I think you guys need to relax. I think you guys need to trust the process. 
the running back group is honestly the one group out of all groups of this team that I feel the most confident in this year. Given what Michael Carter showed us last year, you know, albeit there were some hiccups throughout the season, but still his ability to catch out of the backfield, stretch plays and make plays out of the back. Like, come on, are we serious here? Like, we're going to fret and be mad about Michael Carter being the RB1 after seeing what he did to the Bengals last year? Like, are we being for real? Like, yeah, I know that's, you know, one of the infamous Mike White games and you make of that what you will. But at the same time, production is production. Michael Carter had, I believe, over 100 yards combined that game, maybe even over 150. Like, I think 100 was being generous, you know, through the air and on the ground. You know what I mean? Like, he's a productive player. Like, he's somebody that I do trust to get it done. The only problem with that is this NFL, the way it's trending, you need more than one guy. Like, you need to have some depth at that position. For one, there's injury. For two, there's just workload issues and managing a player's workload and not overworking him. Because running back, I mean, let's be real. It's the, un it's the most undervalued position in football, but it's the most overworked position in football. You know what I mean? Like, make that make sense. You know, outside of the quarterback, edge rusher, running backs have to be versatile in this league. Like, you cannot survive as just that one-trick pony anymore. It's not really based around that. Like, going forward... These guys need to prove themselves on a more versatile level. And I have that trust in Michael Carter as the RB1 to start off with. But, I mean, let's just be real. Like, Brees Hall is the beast. Like, it's Brees the beast, bro. <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? Like, Brees Hall is definitely going to get his. You know what I'm saying? So, all my fantasy guys, all my gambling guys, all my sports books guys, don't worry. Brees Hall is going to be good, bro. He's going to be fine. He's going to be just fine. Like this thinks think of it more so as a one two punch Brees Hall, Michael Carter backfield duo. Don't think of it more so as just Michael Carter, RB1 and this, that and the third, because chances are you're just looking too deep into it. Honestly, like these guys, they're going to get their touches. They're going to be just fine. Like there isn't many competition in case you guys haven't noticed in the Jets running back room. Like, no disrespect. You know, Tevin Coleman, the veteran, Ty Johnson. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not much there for them to be. You know what I mean? Like, you guys just take it easy on that a bit. Michael Carter, Brees Hall, they're both going to be fine. You know, if I'm going to make a prediction on the workload by the end of the year for the both of them, like it's in terms of percentages and how much carries percent wise, I'm going to go 60-40. 60-40 Brees Hall. 60 for Brees and 40 for Michael Carter. Like, I think it's going to start off that way with, you know, Michael Carter as the RB1 and starting off with more snaps. But, I mean, you can only contain Brees the Beast for so long. Like, you got you to gotta let him cook after a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to let my boy eat. You got to. So, yeah, pretty much just my thoughts and opinions on these two stories coming out of jets land and jets nation these past few days like share subscribe take in this gameplay watch me score watch me sack watch me intercept watch me do it all on madden if you want your ass what be f <laughs> be free to just add me on ps5 like i'm handing them out bro <laughs> like it is what it is i'm handing them out so yeah like the video peace yeah.